Hello and welcome to this demonstration of Mobilizing Justice's Transportation Equity Dashboard. This dashboard was designed uh, to bring Statistics Canada's Spatial Access Measures dataset to life. This fantastic Canada-wide dataset provides information on how easy it is to access certain services, um, shown here in step two, such as healthcare, education, recreation, employment, grocery stores, and more, by different modes of transportation, including walking, cycling, and public transit at both peak and off-peak times. The dashboard also brings in fine dissemination area level demographic information so that this can be compared to the spatial access measures, allowing us to move beyond answering questions about service level and towards answering questions about transportation equity. So for our demonstration today, we're gonna to start in Montreal and we've set up a fairly simple scenario about walking to school. And as you can see with, with very little surprises, the densest areas of Montreal uh, have the best uh, ability uh, for people to walk uh, to school simply because there's a higher concentration of schools in those areas. And if we go to a different area, for example, Toronto, we can see a very similar trend where the densest areas of Toronto, the highest concentrations of schools, it's easiest to walk to one or more uh, different schools. And as we go out into the GTA and perhaps even further afield, we can see that these values decrease. And while it's useful and all to compare uh, these values between cities, it is also interesting to look within a particular city uh, or area and see which parts of that community have the highest and the lowest uh, spatial access values. In this case here, zero on the map represents the lowest and one represents the highest, as you can see in the legend. If we zoom into Guelph, though, we can adjust these values using step three, which allows you to adjust the national scores to different units of census geography, including census metropolitan areas, census divisions, or what we'll select today, census subdivisions. And you can see right away, it's a lot easier to observe what areas of Guelph have the easiest access uh, to schools by walking. No surprise around the densest sort of downtown areas of Guelph, uh, you have the best access. But this applies not just for walking to school, we can change our destination to jobs, employment, and we can change our mode to public transit peak to look at commuting to jobs at peak times. And we see a similar pattern observed in Guelph where that downtown area, likely with the most jobs, has the highest values. We can go over to Kitchener-Waterloo quickly and see you know, a somewhat similar pattern, but we see the major transportation corridor, in this case, the ion light rail system is highlighted. But this is truly a Canada-wide tool. So let's head over to Calgary and see what's going on there. And as you can see, very similar idea with the downtown and many uh, different uh, key transportation corridors highlighted. But if we zoom out, we see that some of our census subdivisions are shown in gray. And if we look in the legend, it says no access to selected mode or destination. And that simply means that that census subdivision either doesn't have the destination we're looking at, so I found that some don't have healthcare facilities nearby, but most have employment. So likely the culprit here is that these census subdivisions don't have sort of large public transportation networks. And if we switch to walking quickly, we can see that 
the data populates uh, for these census subdivisions. Now the other useful thing you can do with this dashboard again is bring in that demographic information and start to answer those questions about transportation equity. And the dashboard allows you to do this in a variety of ways. So to do this, we'll go over to Halifax And you can see that it's a census subdivision of Halifax, which is quite a bit larger than Halifax itself. And we're going to go back to our initial scenario of walking to school. We're going to zoom in on Halifax. And for our demographic, we're actually going to keep it as it is. Uh, we're going to look at population 0 to 14, uh, so children, many of whom would be walking uh, to school. But for different scenarios, there are plenty of different demographic groups to choose from. So the first way we're going to look at our demographic information is we're going to click on a dissemination area. And you can see it takes a little bit to load in. But first off, you get this pop up here with the dissemination area profile that compares the access scores uh, to those in the surrounding census subdivision. And it's also going to look at the demographic information. So we can see that 75 children live in this DA, which is 14.2% of the DA's population. But you'll also notice when we did that, it also populated these charts here on the right. So the top chart here is essentially a scatter plot uh, with each dot representing a single DA in the CSD of Halifax plotted against both their proportion of the target uh, population group as well as their access score. And we can see from this that there is actually a slight negative correlation between access to, for walking to school and proportion of uh, children. But we can see if we closely observe the R-square valued, this is a fairly small value, so more research is needed. On the bottom chart, we can see the overall distribution of access scores across the general population in gray and our demographic of interest, our children in purple. We can also see the means highlighted here and we can observe that the population, general population mean for access is actually slightly above the access level for children. But you can see with the curves, they follow each other fairly closely. Another way we can bring in our demographic information is with the Highlight Priority Neighborhoods tool. If we click on that, you see this red area appear on the scatter plot. And this area highlights neighborhoods, the dissemination areas, where they have the lowest access score and the highest proportion of our demographic of interest. So if we click on one of these neighborhoods on the chart, we can see that it, it, they're all actually highlighted on the map. And we can read in our profile that the access score is below that for the CSD average, and also that a high proportion of people living in this DA are children. Another way we can bring in demographic information uh, to our dashboard is using the population points layer. If we toggle this on, we can see that we get a dot density layer showing the distribution of people of our target population group. In this case, children 0 to 14. So that was a demonstration of the Transportation Equity Dashboard. Thank you for watching, and we hope you find it useful.